Hello, welcome to Bible Guru. Thank you for joining us on our journey through the Bible. Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, for all patience and long suffering, with joy. Do you ever feel worthy of the Lord's blessings? In general, I don't. I think most of us don't feel worthy, and in that sense, the unworthiness may increase with age. Jesus said, I do always those things that please the Father. And when he said that, many who heard him believed in him. If I said that, I'm certain that no one would believe me. What was it about Jesus that resonated with people so that they knew he was pleasing God? Paul may have his finger on the key to understanding what we have to do to please God. The first is being fruitful in every good work. I suppose there are many bad works that we might be able to do. We can tear people down, insult them, be rude and thoughtless and inconsiderate. We can gossip and speak badly of people when they are absent while speaking sweetly to them while they are present. We can actively push for evil, paying bribes, encouraging hatred and division and strife and even violence and destruction. We can find benefit from the hurt or addiction of others, or get lost in our own addictions to pleasure, power, or intoxicants or thrills. These are the works of darkness that the enemy of our souls is constantly working to encourage and expand among us. But every good work, love, kindness, goodness, speaking the truth in love, blessing and encouraging, these are the good works that establish God's kingdom on the earth. Paul doesn't stop with all these good works, however. These are the kinds of things we might intuitively list as things that please God. But Paul lists unexpected things like increasing knowledge of God, patience and endurance. Endurance means long-suffering. What God's power is for, it's for knowledge of God. It's for patience and endurance and joy. That's what Paul is saying. I think we sometimes misunderstand the purpose of God's power in our lives. We may intuitively look to him for power to overcome in difficulties or to fight a good battle against our enemies or to move mountains and fulfill our dreams. Maybe those are all good uses of God's power. But Paul mentions none of these. Instead, Paul focuses on the power of God as the means by which we become better human beings. His powers manifest in us as we learn to know him better. As we studied in Ephesians, we should seek to be filled with the knowledge of the height, the depth, the width, and the breadth of the love of God. Four dimensions. That requires a powerful revelation from Him. Have you ever had a friend who helps you be a better person? The better you know him or her, the more you are drawn to higher heights of forgiveness wisdom, and grace, and generosity. If you haven't, pray that God brings such a person into your life and that you become that person for someone else. Jesus is that kind of friend. To know him is to become more like him. John said, we know that when we see him, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Knowing Jesus makes us more like Jesus. Seeing God as he is requires that we acquire attributes of his goodness, his knowledge, his grace, and his truth. What better manifestation of God's power in our lives could there be? But God doesn't stop there. Paul says that we need to continue on into patience, endurance, and joy. These three seem to be unrelated in our thinking, but they're related in Paul's thinking. If you have to be patient, you're in a hurry, and the line in front of you is too long, and the person in the line in front of you starts an argument with the attendant you were hoping to talk to next. This is not a joyous scene. Endurance is that ability to bear under a load. Three years ago, I started a strongman workout program. All strongman workouts involve taking something as heavy as possible and lifting it or pushing it or pulling it or carrying it as far as you can. Just the thought of a strongman workout is painful to me. Endurance work hurts. Endurance in life also hurts. But with God's power, we can be patient in difficulty and endure an increasing load longer and longer 
with joy in our hearts as we see his will accomplished. This is a paradox, like the Beatitudes of Jesus. Paul might say, Blessed are those who are patient and endure a heavy load, for they shall be filled with joy. Strength exercise produces dopamine and endurance exercise produces serotonin. Both of these are feel-good hormones. Maybe there's a spiritual serotonin and dopamine for those who are willing to endure hardships and heavy loads for Jesus. A prayer for today. Father, today, give me your power. Anoint me with your spirit so I can know you. Teach me patience. I know that's a dangerous prayer. But make me patient anyway. Teach me the joy of enduring greater weight for you. Let the heavy load that would have crushed me yesterday become light tomorrow. Make me stronger each day. In the name of the one who left all power to become a weak baby, enduring patiently the cross you set before him for the joy that was set before him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.